Or let's go into space because it's in our DNA. Or let's explore because we're Americans and we move a frontier. That has never driven anything. But you know what has? The war driver. We must prepare for war against China. Not because we're gonna cause war, but because they want war. And militarily, you can't be number one on Earth if you're number two in space. And talk of war extends into space. The space race is no longer a race between just the U.S. and Russia. China has leapfrogged Russia, launching more rockets than the U.S. in 2022. And China has a satellite with a claw arm that can reach out and disable other country satellites. They will tell you that that's not true, but in fact, it is true. American superiority in space is absolutely vital. Beijing could one day deploy offensive weapons in the space between the moon and Earth, an area called Cis-Lunar. A Chinese satellite was caught red-handed when it snuck away from its position in Earth orbit to do something very unsettling. U.S. Space Command says China is building capabilities that put most U.S. space assets at risk. We are learning that images taken of the spy balloons by high-altitude U-2 planes show in detail five antennas and huge solar panels. All of this is especially alarming as the balloon passed over sensitive military sites before the U.S. Air Force shot it down off the South Carolina coast. We don't want there to be a war in space. We want all of humanity to continue to use all the benefits of space for all of our good. But, but if others choose to uh, start a war there, we'll be ready. The Ukraine crisis is the first major conflict in which both sides have become so reliant on space. The use of commercial space capabilities to augment military and national decision-making capabilities has proven to be effective for the Ukrainians. I think we can look at some of the observations we're seeing in Ukraine, that a, a distributed architecture where there are more satellites uh, with, with proliferated missions uh, that's harder to attack. Big single satellites are much easier to attack than a distributed, proliferated constellation of capabilities. It becomes a, a, a tougher targeting problem. What are the rules of engagement for the use of space weapons? Any code of conduct for space tailings, tracking, testing of weapons in space, and other hostile military acts? Space Force was created to avoid an actual shooting war in space or on the moon. General Sean Bratton. How do you determine what is a hostile act in space? We're working through that now. We don't have that history like we do in the other domains to build upon. And so as we're encountering these, um, these threatening activities for the first time, it's forcing us to really define these terms. We pick up heading Dragon. 270 Dragon. detonator, Chinese Dragon. Follow on good hit, dead man. Who are the main players, or shall we say adversaries? Space coalitions are forming once again. Today, the United States, China, and Russia are certainly the most capable spacefaring nations. These competitors seek to turn the global security system on its head, rewrite the rules in their favor, and according to their author authoritarian view of the world, this threatens global stability and efforts for peace. The United States and her allies and partners seek to maintain the system, built on the ideals of freedom and democracy, uh, U.S. officials have just called out China for its pursuit of space superiority. You know, there are certain countries in this world that have hundreds of um, military bases all over the world and a massive military-industrial complex. But only one country has a space force, and that's America. Uh, and so that's just what's happening, is that there's, rather than one big guy in town now, there are other new kids on the block that are flexing their muscles and trying to impress. Moving from a, a unipolar to a multipolar geopolitical world, uh, and that is coming whether a certain quarters like it or not. It's a real politic is going on and you know there are countries that would rather China wasn't quite so successful and others that wish China was even more successful. 
Former Foreign Minister George Yeo says China is more likely to inspire a multipolar world than replace the United States as the dominant global power. The current policy of identifying Russia as enemy and China as long-term strategic competitor shows U.S. determination to preserve its global dominance with the help of a Western alliance. He argues that China has no ambition to become the single pole of power. If tensions on Earth are any indication of the relations in space, we should be space-fearing as war that begins on Earth can extend into outer space. Can we continue this relationship with Russia on the ISS? That is what is amazing. In the civilian space program, we can have this professional relationship that goes on without a hitch between Russians and American space flyers. While on the face of the earth, the leader of Russia is doing an unconscionable invasion of another sovereign country. A little more cynical, I said, wait a minute. You think that just because you transport humans from Earth's surface where we're killing each other into space, that all of a sudden we're gonna behave completely differently? Then you don't understand humans. By the way, I'll believe it if you could demonstrate you could do it on Earth. And by the way, if you can do it in space, why not do it on Earth? Show me! If, if we, if, if, why should space be any different? By the way, Earth is in space. Last I checked, okay? The U.S. Space Command and the U.S. Space Force is a commitment to space security, with NATO has been declaring that space is too an operation domain in a space war that is willing to use offensive weapons. We're in the middle of one of the most fundamental changes in the character of war in the history of mankind. Country that, that adapts the fastest, that country that innovates the most, that country's gonna have a decisive advantage at the beginning of a war, uh, which I suspect will happen at some point in time, uh, sometime in the deep future. We're watching pretty much any part of the world that we need to be watching from a national security uh, perspective. And we're capable of watching any part of the globe. Also would like for our adversaries to know what we can do. Uh, there are some things that we can do that I think would help chill their enthusiasm for aggression if they knew more about our capability. The Space Force's capabilities, what we can provide to the Joint Force, are extremely capable and I still put us at the head of the table. Unfortunately, our adversaries are investing heavily to close that gap and, and supersede us. I'm worried about the pace with which they are making those changes. China first amongst them, but Russia also... Trust is low and likely to dip even further. Russia and China will always be portrayed as aggressive. Commanders here worry Beijing and Moscow could one day deploy offensive military weapons in the space between the moon and Earth, an area called Cislunar. What is your concern about Cislunar? They are very secretive. There is no openness at all to their space program. They do not want to cooperate, and it's primarily a military program. Now, they will tell you that that's not true, but in fact, it is true. Deutsche Welle reports that a satellite tracking company spotted a Chinese satellite sneaking around in Earth orbit. China's SJ-21 satellite disappeared from its regular position. SJ-21 was later spotted executing a large maneuver to bring it closely alongside another Chinese satellite. SJ-21 then grabbed the dead satellite. Over the course of the next few days, the two spacecraft moved together westward. On January 26, they separated and the dead satellite was pushed into a graveyard orbit. After pushing the dead satellite into a graveyard orbit, SJ-21 has returned to its original position. Although such satellites can be used for good, the evidence is not welcome news for Pentagon policymakers, as this means China has the ability to use similar satellites to grab American satellites and destroy them by pushing them into Earth's atmosphere. While both Russia and China are developing capabilities to destroy U.S. satellites in all orbital regimes, at all altitudes. They well know American high-precision war fighting is dependent on space systems. China is moving into space in a big way. The president, Xi Jinping, has said that outer space is a key part of the China dream. 
Beijing also sees space as a crucial aspect of its aim to become the world's number one technological great power by 2049 with an intimidating military. China has a network of communication satellites ringing the earth which are vital for maintaining both the internet and its surveillance of what's happening on the earth. And as part of this broader satellite system, Beijing is also pushing forward the development of missiles and electronic weapons that can target satellites in low and high orbit. China can use sensors to detect enemy submarines at sea and already tested hypersonic weapons, those that can fly at least five times faster than the speed of sound spacecraft were tailing a U.S. satellite, instantly making breaking news as a threat to U.S. national security. February 2nd, 2022 in California, SpaceX launched a classified government satellite into orbit. Believed to be a top secret state-of-the-art spy satellite, Within months, Russia launched its own spy satellite, Cosmo 2558, placing it in the same orbit and just beneath the U.S. satellite. That's really irresponsible behavior, but we see that it's in a similar orbit to one of our high-value assets for the U.S. government. I think they're trying to send a message that they could target somebody else's as well. And, uh, and now we have to deal with the aftermath of those, uh, those tests. The U.S. uses its spy satellites to monitor what its adversaries are doing. How vulnerable are American satellites? The U.S. says both Russia and China have intentionally demonstrated offensive military capabilities in space targeting and destroying their own satellites, scattering thousands of pieces of debris across low Earth orbit. Days ago in the Washington Post, in Washington, military planners are realizing that China has surpassed the United States in hypersonic military technology. Does anyone seated at the table disagree with that assessment? Uh, Congressman, I think uh, in terms of assessments, we should probably take that to a classified discussion. With gajillions of dollars, we're going to sufficiently deter China. And what you said last year, what you've confirmed now, is that we need a capability in the near term that we do not have. What this leak shows is that China has it. Can you think of any other world leader at trade places with Xi Jinping? Not a joke. Can you think of any? Who would? I can't think of one. This man has enormous problems. If you've liked what you've seen in today's program, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Reportify Media.